This video is brought to you by Scopic.com. Get yours now. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Phil from NK.com and today we're going to take a look at the Galaxy A5 2017. It's already been three years. It started with the 2015, 2016 and then it's already 2017 and it's back with the new design. It's not exactly new. It looks mostly like the Galaxy S7 with the minier version of it. And I have to be honest, I, I never actually liked the design from the beginning. But as I use it as a daily driver, it's gotten better. It's one of those designs that actually grows on you. Although this still isn't the design that is exact my taste, I think this is a pretty well designed, well balanced, built with the good materials. And also it's got an IP68 water and dust resistance, which is very hard to find at this price point. I still think the camera size is a bit imbalanced, I think it only fits the A3, but still there is no camera bump, so I guess we can deal with that. The earphone jack survived and it's at the bottom of the phone, and the speaker is on the right hand side, which I think is a better position than bottom or the back since it's harder to be blocked by your hand, but I figure that it still is blockable when you're trying to show a video to other person like this, but still it's a lot less likely than two traditional positions. Moving on to the display, it's got a 5.2 inch of an AMOLED panel, full HD, and it's a pretty good panel, aside from the fact that it has a bit of a green tint to the display, but you can adjust that thanks to the color balance, so I suggest you do that. And there now is an always on display, just like the Galaxy S7. And just like they started on the Galaxy Note 7, you can double tap on the notification icon to go directly to the app. It's got the new Samsung interface, it's cleaner, brighter, and overall just better than the previous Samsung ones. I still like the vanilla Android better, but this is the best job that Samsung has ever done with their TouchWiz interface. By this far, what it looks from the outside and the inside, it looks just like another flagship. But of course it isn't. There are some secretly deleted features. Let's start with the very minor one. Always on display is there, and double tap the notification icon to go to the app is cool. But there is very limited number of the layouts. For calendar, there's only one, and even for the clock, there's only two. And the part that makes me mad is that these don't even cost money. You could have just left it there, but Samsung had to delete that much. And the second thing is the haptic feedback. When you tap on that button or when you're typing on this stock Samsung keyboard, you don't get the vibration feedback, so you just don't have the same experience. And while I'll admit that it's a good camera, it's missing the OIS that was available from the last year's model. And also you don't get to have the notification LED, which is even available for the Galaxy J7 Prime. And there could be some minor features that I wasn't able to find that is gone. But if it were all the deletions, I wouldn't have even liked the phone. There are some features that Samsung has secretly added up to the phone. Starting with the sensors, it's got 20 sensors, I know that's not a lot, but comparing that with the ever so little number of sensors that the last year's model had, this is abundant. For the first time, it's got a gyro sensor, so you can use that to Pokemon Go AR mode. Next up is a smart view. You can cast or stream your screen to the bigger screen, like your television. And now there's a secure folder built in, which you can use to securely put your apps to it. And the best part is that it duplicates the app. So you can have a messenger with a different account and you don't have to worry about it because it's a totally different virtual container. I know it sounds lame, but it is actually like having two phones in one. And I know that this isn't something spectacular, but accessibility settings can now be exported. There's a menu called Manage Accessibility, and you can import, export, and share your accessibility settings at once. Now, turning into the basic performance, it's actually pretty good. Launching the apps, closing the apps, launching the camera, closing the camera, it's actually pretty fast, although there are some noticeable lags here and there, but none of them was annoying enough to degrade the overall experience. And what about that camera? Everybody needs a camera. Well, get this, it's good. Both front and rear cameras are very good, and they're good no matter what shooting environment you have. The rear camera is missing the OIS and it hurts, but not by much. Just a heads up, it doesn't shoot the 4K video, and surprisingly, selfie can be a bit shaky. But to make things better, you can now have a floating camera button, which you can position anywhere you want on that screen. And as you have just seen, now you can use the screen as a flash just like an iPhone, although I don't think that helps that much. And if you're a filter person, then you'd be glad to know that there are a lot of filters that are borrowed from popular camera apps. Now, running up the whole game is a 3000 milliamps of the built-in battery. And I was a bit worried till this point because everything else was so near perfect. But don't you worry at all. It lasts six and a half hours to seven hours. This is spectacular. I know this is not like the definite first place material, but this is really good. There's more and more phones reaching out to seven hours to eight hours in my proprietary testing for screen on time. But still, this is a very good score. And charging via the USB Type-C port is really fast too. For 30 minutes, you're going to have about 50% charge and only for an hour and a half, you're going to have the full charge out of it. Overall, this was an amazing experience. I don't consider myself as a Samsung fan. At the first glance, I didn't like the design, I thought it was overpriced, and I thought Samsung was going backwards with this new approach of the A series. But after I spent my time with it, it's simply not true. This is an amazing phone. I still think it's a bit overpriced for its specs. Of course, you can get the similar spec phone for the cheaper price, and for this price, you may be able to get the flagship from other manufacturers. 
but this is one worry-free phone that you're gonna get. It's water and dust resistance, it's got amazing battery, it's got a stable software, good camera, great build quality, and Samsung's gonna update this software for at least two times. Now I'm convinced that it's worth it. For the 420 bucks or I don't know, 470 euros that you're spending, I think it's totally worth it. Don't simply look at the specs. This is very well balanced, very stable, and very dependable phone while it's not as expensive as the S series. I don't like the price either, but it's worth it. Thank you always for watching. I hope it helped. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. In the meanwhile, you can meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And we'll see you guys later with the great balanced phones like the Galaxy A series later on. Thank you always for watching. We'll see you guys later. Ciao.